All right, greetings everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. So if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, just click subscribe right now. Click subscribe. Click subscribe. Click subscribe right now. You subscribe yet? Click subscribe right now. All right. So remember to also subscribe to my other YouTube channel. That's Corey Fences. Corey Fences. You subscribe yet? Subscribe now for me now. Please and thanks. All right. So for tonight's video, we are going to do um, January 2014 um, paper one. We've done the May, June 2014 paper one already. This is going to be the January one. All right. So let me just... Put this full screen. Okay, January 2014 now. All right, and I'm wishing you guys all the best for your exam. And I hope, I hope everybody gets a grade one, especially the people who subscribe. You see me? Hope you guys get a grade one. Everybody, but especially the people who subscribe, more and them get straight A profile, right? Yes, because as soon as the video come out, them get them notification and thing, and they know. All right, so number one says, which of the following is mainly responsible for the socialization of children in a Caribbean nuclear family? Notice the key term there, nuclear family, who is the head, right? First, you have to start thinking in your mind, who is in a nuclear family? So we know in a nuclear family, there is the mother, the father with a child or children, right? So is it A, parents, Sorry, A aunts, B parents, C cousins, D grandparents. Answer is B parents, right? Because there are no aunts, because it's a nuclear family and not extended. So no aunts and grandparents and cousins aren't in there. So because them say nuclear that eliminates three and leave you with one, which is parents. Number two says a foster parent is one who A operates a nursery, B adopts a child legally, C works in a children's home or D, takes care of a child for the state? Answer is D, takes care of a child for the state. It's not somebody who adopts a child legally. A foster parent supervises a child for a period of time for the state. Child doesn't live with them permanently or becomes their legal child permanently, no. So the answer is, takes care of a child for the state, D. Number three, a newly married couple resides with the husband's father under the father's traditional authority. This situation may be described as normally when a married couple reside with the husband's parents, it's usually patri-local, right? But they added something to this, which it says under the father's traditional authority. So that changes the narrative a little bit. So is it A, patriarchal, B, patrilineal, C, paternalistic, D, polygamous. We know it's not paternalistic or polygamous. Good? Because he has only one wife. She has one husband. Good? So paternalistic and polygamous are out. It's between patriarchal and patrilineal. When, once you say lineal line, it's on lineage. Right? So that can't be the answer either. It is patriarchal. The man is the authoritarian figure or authoritative figure, which are one of, whichever one of them is grammatically correct. So it's A, patriarchal. Four, the term kinship implies A, close friendship, B, blood relationship, C, members of the same ethnic group, or D, members of the same organization. Answer is B, blood relationship. Number five, which of the following does not refer to the family as an economic unit? A, going to church together. B, saving and spending wisely. C, producing its own goods and services. Or D, earning money to purchase its basic needs, right? Once you say economic, it's the exchange of money. Spending or receiving money, good. So, which of the following is not referring to the family as an economic unit? Saving and spending wisely, money that. Producing its own goods and services, money that. Earning money, money again. So the answer is A, going to church together. Six, which of the following situations represents a recent change in the role of family members? 
A, fathers being employed in white collar jobs, B, mothers spending more time with their babies, or C, adolescents playing a part in family decision making, D, grandparents socializing, grandparents' socialization role being more effective. Right? So three are traditional, one is new, right? Or one is as a result of a change. This is a repeated question. So the answer is C, adolescents playing a part in family decision making. That never used to happen back in the day, right? Because the traditional decision maker usually was the father. But now with these new families and the change in society with a lot of men not being playing a central role in the family anymore, children have now become part of the decision making. Number seven, for which of the following reasons is family planning promoted in the Caribbean? A repeated question as well. A, to teach parents to supervise the activities of their children. B, to allow persons to have safe sexual relationships with partners. C, to ensure a balance in the population between males and females. D, to give parents control over the number and spacing of their children. Answer is D. That's one of the main reasons for family planning, to give parents or contraceptives to give parents control over the number and spacing of their children. Number eight, which of the following would undermine the authority of a parent in a home? Another repeated question again. A, setting and enforcing clear rules for conduct. B, accepting suggestions from family members. C, inconsistency in rewarding and punishing children. D, giving cash allowances to adolescent family members, right? What would undermine the authority of parents? Another repeated question. C, inconsistency in rewarding and punishing children. If you do that, it's going to cause a problem in your family. Parents should be consistent in punishing and rewarding. Because if you're inconsistent with punishment, the children are going to look at you as a clown or as a joker. If you're inconsistent in rewarding, Many times, children are not going to want to do what they are supposed to do because they are going to say, if I do this, mommy and daddy not even recognize me or give me a reward for this. Number nine, monogamy is the accepted form of union in the Caribbean, mainly because you know that monogamy is marriage between one man and one woman, right? So is it A, women have always demanded equal rights? B, there are equal numbers of men and women? C, experiments with other forms of marriage have failed or d the region has been influenced by the christian religion that's pretty easy d the region has been influenced by the christian religion so we believe in marriage and marriage between a man and a woman number 10 item 10 refers to the following statement the contemporary caribbean woman occupies key managerial positions in caribbean organizations 10 says no. Which of the following may best explain the reasons for the situation described in the above statement? Right? This one is a little bit tricky. Remember, we're looking at why women occupy managerial positions in Caribbean organizations, right? Contemporary Caribbean women. A, expansion and growth of industry. B, the use of new technology in the workplace. C, the increased availability of educational opportunities, or D, men's inability to meet the economic demands of families. Answer for number 10 is C, the increased availability of educational opportunities. And let's look why. Remember that traditionally, the woman usually stay home, take care of the children, do domestic duties, take care of her husband, right? Education wasn't as paramount or as important back then as it is now. So women stayed home and the men, was the, the men were the main breadwinners and they went out and worked. But now we that a lot of women are going out to work because they have more educational opportunities. And even so, more women are at universities than men in the region. And that is statistically factual, right? And even if in, in I'm not being sexist now, but in a lot of schools, the girls tend to do better than the boys, right? Because the focus has shifted from the men and shifted towards women. So the women have their degrees and their masters and their doctorate so they can go out and get key managerial job positions, which back then used to be occupied or dominated by men. A lot of these positions or a lot of these jobs are being dominated now by females. Number 11. Which of the following statements support the idea of equal rights for men and women? One, men and women do the same jobs and they should get the same pay. Two, 
men and women should maintain traditional roles in the family, or three, men and women should be allowed to share in national decision making. So we know that one and three are correct. Two now, it says equal rights for men and women. Men and women should maintain traditional roles in the family. If that is done, then yeah, that way I have equal rights. Because the man alone is going to go out, they go work, and the woman is going to be forced to stay home and do domestic duty and be told that she cannot work, right? So that's not equal rights. It's one and three only. So the answer for number 11 is B. Number 12, a couple is thinking about having their first child. Which of the following is least, sorry, which of the following is likely to be the least important in their planning? Man and a woman planning to have a child, what is least likely important to them? A, social status. B, financial status. C, health of both parents. D, stability of the relationship. You know, the answer is A, social status. It's a repeated question. And it's quite obvious too, right? Number 13, which of the following is most often given by married couples as a reason for seeking a divorce? A, infertility of the wife, B, infidelity of one partner, C, one partner being illiterate, or D, husband being unemployed. Answer is B, infidelity of one partner, right? That's usually one of the main reasons for a divorce. One partner going out there and being unfaithful or what we call cheating. Number 14, which of the following is the least likely effect of drug abuse by one or both parents on family life? Remember, it's the least likely effect so three are great, one is not so great. So we're trying to find the one that is not so great. A, physical abuse of children. B, increased rivalry among siblings. C, emotional tension among family members. Or D, insufficient money for children's education. The one that is not so great is B, increased rivalry among siblings. That has nothing to do with the parents' drug abuse problem. 15. A society is best described as a group of people, A, living in a foreign country, B, protesting about their human rights, C, held together by a common culture, or D, working together in the same community. So a society is C, held, held together by a common culture. Number 16. Caribbean governments have improved the rights of children born out of wedlock. This is a repeated question too. Is it A, providing incentives for their parents to get married, B, building more foster homes for abandoned children, C, passing laws to allow them to qualify for inheritance, or D, passing laws to control sexual relations outside of marriage. Answer is C, passing laws to allow them to qualify for inheritance. Let's go on to number 17 now. A subculture usually refers to a group within a wider culture, right, which is distinct, a, lifestyle, B, leisure pursuits, C, political systems, or D, occupation and trade. So subculture, within a wide, wider culture, it has to have a distinct what? Is it A, lifestyle, B, leisure pursuits, C, political system, D, occupation and trade, A, lifestyle. That is what it, it needs to have. Number 18, a budget has a deficit when expenditure a deficit meaning negative that they don't have enough or it is greater than, right? So a budget has a deficit when expenditure is, expenditure is your expenses. When expenditure is A, equal to revenue, B, less than revenue, C, greater than revenue, D, sufficient in finance, sufficient to finance development. Answer is C, greater than revenue. Whenever the expenses is greater than the money that the government is collecting as revenue, then we have a deficit in the budget. So 18 is C. Item 19 refers to the following statement. Interaction takes place on a face-to-face -face basis when specific objectives in mind. Interaction takes place on a face-to-face -face basis with specific objectives in mind. To which of the following groups does the above statement apply? A, interest. B, formal. C, voluntary. D, involuntary. So interaction takes place on a face-to-face -face basis with specific objectives in mind. Face-to-face -face means that it is going to be a primary group. So it is small and Everybody or most persons, right, have specific job objectives that they hope to achieve. So we know that, <coughs> sorry, 
it's not a voluntary group. A voluntary, usually spontaneous. No, but you have some voluntary group who has specific objectives in, in mind for true. But you have some of them who are kind of spontaneous. They take on different, different um, kind of jobs. But that's kind of specific to, you know, right? Formal groups, right? Formal groups doesn't, doesn't have to be small and voluntary groups doesn't have to be small either. So that will eliminate formal and voluntary groups. Some groups, some involuntary groups might be small while you have some of them who are large as well, right? Because you have some countries who have um, compulsory military service and that's not small. Would, while you have involuntary groups like families, that might be small. However, families don't always have the same kind of goals and objectives in mind. So I, that, it would eliminate that one for me. So we're left with interest groups. Interest groups usually have specific objectives in mind because interest is a particular purpose and everybody surrounds the purpose and hope to achieve the objective or achieve the goal. And interest groups are usually small. Right? So the answer for number 19 is A, interest group. Number 20, which of the following is an example of an informal gathering? Is it A, peer group, B, trade union, C, political party, D, class in a school? Informal, A, peer group, right? So there are no rules and regulations, no clear leader, no sanctions. It is spontaneous, no membership requirement, no marks of identity, right? While all the others would have that. Trade unions would have that. Political parties would have that. Schools would, ha would have that. Because schools, you wear a uniform. There's a principal who is clearly the head. There's a chairman. There are teachers, I understand there are rules and regulations, there are sanctions, so on and so forth. 21, which of the following best characterizes a primary group? We, are, we would have discussed primary group earlier, right? So is it A, a sense of belonging, B, face-to-face -face interaction, C, a common name or title, B, shared beliefs and norms, right? Many groups have shared beliefs and norms, but they are not primary groups, right? Schools, shared beliefs and norms, but that's not a primary group, that's a secondary group. A common name or title can have that, but that doesn't necessarily make it primary, or that's not a main characteristic of a primary group. Primary groups, you have face-to-face -face interaction, a sense of belonging. But with most groups, there's a sense of belonging, even though if, even informal groups, because we have boys playing football in the evening. That's an example of an informal group. There's a sense of belonging because the guys get some form of enjoyment out of it and then probably know each other and stand up and talk a bit or heal them one another when they see each other on the road. However, that not must necessarily mean that it's a primary group. It can be secondary too because sometimes you have all 30 men on the field one time because it's not a quote-unquote regular group right and also there is no intimacy in that group because the man them just link up at evening time on the field play football go home sometimes they're not even talk to each other after that good so what is a primary characteristic of a primary group or use the word primary two time is face-to-face -face interaction because the group is small and they see each other constantly Good, for example, a class of students, a family. Good, so 21 is B, face-to-face -face interaction. 22, individuals usually feel compelled to obey the rules of the group to which they belong because A, members are easily identified. B, they prefer to remain members of the group. C, accepting the rules is part of normal human behavior. Or D, groups, are, groups use sanctions against members who disobey rules right so they feel compelled to obey because d groups that use sanctions against members who disobey rules that's pretty easy 23 the document which presents the framework in which laws are made and which prescribes the relationship between the people and the state is the a a budget b manifesto c constitution d referendum answer is c constitution 24 a congregation is a formal group mainly because members A, perform the same rights, B, go to church regularly, C, live in the same community, D, are selected by other members. All right, let's look. Are selected by other members, that's not a characteristic of a formal group. 
see, live in the same community. You don't have to live in the same community to be a part of a formal group. Go to church regularly. You don't have to go to the place <laughs> regularly to make it a formal group because we have formal groups that meet once a week or every two weeks. They are formal because they perform the same rites. That is why they are formal. So answer for number 24 is A. So let me explain that a little bit more for those who might not be so certain. Rites, for example, in order to say, let me put it to Christianity, although I know that there are others watching the video who are of other religions. So I'm talking about what I know and what I've experienced. All right, so a congregation is formal because you have certain rites. There are rites of passage, right? And there are things, protocols that you must follow to be a member. You can't just get up and be a member of a church like that. You must first baptize, so that is a right. You understand? You have some church who believe that you have to um, be filled with the Holy Ghost to sing on the choir, or to preach, or to play the music, those kinds of things. 25. In all CARICOM countries, citizens have the right to vote. This situation is preserved because A, elections occur every four or five years, B, citizens would only vote if required by law to do so. C, elections are a democratic way to choose a government, or D, there are two or more political parties in each of these countries. Answer is C, elections are a democratic way to choose a government, right? So that is why citizens have a right to vote, because democracy is government by the people for the people. So the, government can, so the people can put up the government and also take them down. 26. Which of the following is a form of government that some CARICOM countries adopt after independence? Forms of government, A, Republic, B, Single Party, C, Representative, B, Crown Colony. All right. We used to have Crown Colony, but that was before um, independence. After independence, we've gotten rid of that, or we would have changed. Representative, uh, representative or the old representative system. I don't know any government name representative, but I know of the old representative system that was before Crown Colony during and right after slavery. I think the Mark Bay Rebellion happened in Jamaica and then that, that kind of changed for Jamaica and then we became Crown Colony. But those two are no more. I don't know any of a um, single party government unless it is say that's an autocratic government or what we call communism right but the answer for 26 is a republic that's the only one that we're left with now right yes so it's a 27 the role of the opposition in parliament can best be described as this is a repeated question too a inciting civil disobedience and mass protest B, voting against all bills debated in Parliament. C, rejecting policies which the ruling party proposes. Or D, analyzing government's policies and presenting alternatives. Answer is D, analyzing government's policies and presenting alternatives. Number 28, which of the following best describes the functions of a government which follows the Westminster model? A, it rules the nation entirely by decree. B, it makes laws, interprets them, and enforces them. C, it makes laws but cannot interpret or enforce them. D, it makes laws, interprets them, but cannot enforce them. Answer for 28 is B, it makes laws, interprets them, and enforces them. Answer for 28 again is B, makes laws, interprets them, and enforces them. Some persons might have a challenge with this answer because of the term on a constitutional monarchy called separation of power. So when we teach, we show them that all three are arms of the government. We show students, well, I show students that all three are arms of the government. We have the legislature, that's the lawmaking arm of the government. We have the executive that sets policy. Then we have the judiciary that interprets law. However, it's not government members who interpret the law that's where it becomes kind of touchy why some persons might might want to say that b is not the answer however the persons who interpret the law they are an arm of the government but it's just as it is not government members like the legislature where the upper house and lower house sits in parliament or the executive that comes out of parliament, right? We don't have anybody coming out of parliament being a part of the judiciary. Understand that, however, it's still an arm of the government because it's the government's role 
to ensure that they have people who interpret the law. Hope you understand. Number 29, an individual may be deprived of his constitutional right if A, there's a natural disaster, B, the head of state has resigned, C, the cabinet has been reshuffled, or D, a state of emergency has been declared. Answer is D, a state of emergency has been declared. If your government is a constitutional monarchy, or maybe if you're a republic, please do some reading on a state of emergency. Currently in Jamaica, we have states of emergency in several parts of the island. So we would have been familiar. Jamaicans would have been familiar with this, right? Under a state of emergency, your human rights can be temporarily suspended. 30, the right to vote in elections is known as A, ballot, B, franchise, C, manifesto, D, constituency. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to do part two. Hopefully I can do part two tomorrow so that you can watch the rest from 31 to 60. You subscribe yet? If you have not yet subscribed, subscribe now. Also, remember to subscribe to my other channel that is Curry Fences, right? Same place on YouTube, Curry Fences. All right, thank you guys for watching. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Bye for now.